Well, everybody wants to talk about it, even sometimes quietly. Uh, it is the subject that is as universal as anything else. Sometimes, however, we're talking about sex and those who can't control their sexual desires and passions. That's what we're going to be talking about today, because our guest is Dr. Stephanie Carnes, and let me officially give our audience your title. Dr. Carnes, President of the International Institute for Trauma and Addiction Professionals. If someone comes into your office and says, I'm a sex addict, do you automatically believe that's a possibility? Because I still hear that there's some question as to whether one just wants to continue to be free to do it or one really does have an addiction. Sure, I, I think I do think it's a possibility. Uh, it can be overdiagnosed, and a lot of people will think just because they're um, struggling with a little uh, pornography or had an affair that they're uh, potentially a sex addict. And we're, we really don't, uh, we look for specific criteria to determine if someone is a sex addict. What, what's the criteria? Uh, we're looking for uh, people that are continuing despite consequences, have destroyed their relationships, they spend excessive amounts of time, um, and, and a lot of time preoccupied with their behavior. They try to stop the behavior and they fail. Um, they even can have withdrawal symptoms, like a psychological withdrawal um, from not being able to access the behavior. And that would be one of the manifestations of a true addiction. That's withdrawal, right. right. That's right. And tolerance as well. For example, you can have people who are viewing too much pornography or compulsively viewing pornography, and they have to use more and more to get the same effect. I read about an addiction specifically to pornography. Right. Is it more common today because of the availability? Absolutely. So whenever you have the, an increased availability of something, you have more addiction. So in places that have more bars, you have more problem drinking. In places with more casinos, you have more problem gambling. When you have meth labs, you have more meth addiction. So now that the internet is so prevalent and is everywhere, uh, we're starting to see a lot more internet pornography addiction. And for clinicians, it's incredibly common to, to have that present in the office. As a Catholic school kid, all I remember is National Geographic uh, coming in the mail every so often, and that was as close to naked ladies as we ever got. That's right, and today it's much more intense and much more graphic. And dangerous for children? Absolutely, absolutely. We're starting to see people, the average age of first exposure to pornography is 11. And so Would we're. Would you say that again, please? Excuse me. Sure, yeah. The average age for first exposure to pornography is 11. So we're starting to see people even having problems with it at like 9 and 10. So it's very sad, but the, the children are being exposed to very graphic material at an early age, and they don't know how to handle it. And how should we, how the the parents' response is important? How should they respond yeah. if they find out that Junior is looking at pornography on his computer? Right. So it's so common, and we don't want to shame a child around it. We want to obviously treat it, te teach them, treat them with sensitivity. Um, normalize, you know, that this happens to a lot of children, that they can be exposed, and teach them that it can be addictive, and also teach them about healthy sexuality. Because what they're seeing is um, they can oftentimes see, be exposed to violent or perhaps unusual or maybe even deviant sexuality, depending on what kind of pornography they're seeing. And so that can be, uh, that can be difficult to understand for an 11-year-old. As an addiction specialist, do you see women too? Absolutely, yeah. We're we're opening a new program for for women up at the the Meadows where I where I work, um, and it's a little bit different for women than it is for men. Um, women present with more uh, love and relationship addiction uh, as well as sex addiction. So their behaviors often involve. Um, things like uh, multiple relationships at the same time, affairs, uh, hooking up, um, you know, uh, falling in love over and over again, lots of uh, sequential relationships, uh, that type of thing. So it usually presents with a more of a relationship addiction feel. Um, so, but it's also very common for women. We have women that struggle with pornography, things like um, hookups, online apps like Tinder. Um, you know, uh, one night stands, those types of things, very common for women. Talk to us, doctor, about treatment 
and specifically about the meadows. You've mentioned it a couple yeah, of times, sure. and people should know about the availability of this facility. Right. Well, it's it's much more common than people think, and there are the treatment is available both outpatient and inpatient, um, and uh, it's you know it's very successful. People do very well in treatment and. You know, uh, inpatient we get more acute cases, people that have really destroyed their lives, um, people with struggling um, with like pornography and, and relationships oftentimes can start with outpatient treatment and get a lot of help and support there. So they'll want to get a, a trained therapist, someone that's a certified sex addiction therapist is, is most helpful in these instances. I know that there's a question right now going through some people's minds saying, do I really want to go through treatment if it involves abstinence. Well, that, thank you for bringing that up because uh, recovery from sex addiction is actually more like recovery from an eating disorder. So you have to, instead of abstaining, you have to learn how to have a healthy relationship with food. And more info and, is available at the Meadows? Yeah, you can, you can uh, at the Meadows and also at itap.com. And we have a, a website, sexhelp.com as well, that has a lot of resources for people struggling with the addiction. Thank you. Yes, you bet. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having because me. Because if there has been a question and you didn't know where to go, sexhelp.com. It's as simple as that. This is The Daily Mix, and I'm Patrick Mann.